All right, so welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Earth. So uh, I've done a lot of videos explaining how the various cards work in various games, like like Ark Nova and Terraforming Mars and Everdell, you know, and Dominion. So many games with so many cards. There's a lot going on with a lot of these cards, and it's hard to memorize every single card. And some are obviously harder than others. Now, I'm not I'm not a perfect explainer at these cards um, when it comes to these games. I'm sure I've gotten some of them wrong with, like, Terraforming Mars and Ark Nova and stuff. I'm sure I've gotten some of them wrong over the years. But I'm going to try my best to try to explain how, how all of the fauna cards work from Earth here in this particular video. So uh, let's get started. So... Here we have the fauna or animal cards from Earth. Now there's a lot of there's a lot of these cards. And because they are double-sided, you'll never play with two particular animals in the same game. You'll never play with the echidna and the kingfisher in the same game because it's double-sided. But because there's only four that you'll actually play with in this game, you're not going to be able to play with I'm sure there's not really anyone on the planet yet that has played with every single fauna card there is because there's so many and you're only playing with four per game. Um, also, uh, there's a lot of abilities in here that can be a little confusing too, which is another reason why I'm making this video. Some are easier than others to understand, of course. I have some examples for some of these as well to help you understand um, how uh, these are going to score you points at the end of the game. Now obviously uh, the way these work is when you you know complete a flora or should I say, or should I say when you complete a fauna card whenever you meet meet the qualifications to you know uh, basically um, appease this animal here, okay? Whenever you meet the qualifications to appease an animal, you're going to put your little leaf token on the spot next to the animal, corresponding animal, and at the end of the game, you're going to score victory points. Uh, obviously, that's how that's going to work, okay? But let's talk about how the abilities actually work, okay? Let's get started with the explanation, okay? So first of all, we have the echidna here, and in order to basically meet the qualifications for this one. You have to have six six of these red abilities in your area. Now, it can be cards that you have out in play, okay? And remember, it's a four by four grid, so it can be cards you have in play. It can also include your island and your climate card. So, for instance, it can include your island card. This one doesn't have a red ability. Neither does this one. But if you look at this one, it has a red ability on it. So this one would qualify to help you earn this, okay? So that's one of a, a potential, obviously, island card that could potentially help you. And of course, here we have a climate card that also has a red ability. If you had this climate card, it could also help you complete the qualifications for the echidna, okay? So those are some examples, pretty simple and easy. There's a lot of cards with red abilities, and it even tells you the percentage of the likelihood you'll you'll have a you'll find a card that has uh, that a red ability on it. Okay, so let's move on to the other side. Obviously, this one is basically the same thing, except it's for blue abilities. You have to have six or more on your island, and it can include your island card and climate card as well. So pretty easy and straightforward, especially after talking about the echidna here. So that's how those two would work. The green iguana, same thing. And it has to have this uh, yellow ability. Um, you have to have six of these yellow abilities, you know, either in your four by four grid, your island card and your climate card can be included in that as well to uh, basically meet the qualifications for the green iguana here. And then we have the spotted hyena. Now with this one, You'll notice right away it's only giving you you only need to have three or more cards in your you know basically four by four grid 
and it also includes islands. So it doesn't include climate cards because climate cards don't have this ability anyways, but some islands do have this black ability. And it even tells you the percentage of other cards that have the black ability, 14%. So that doesn't mean that does mean that does mean that you know the chances of you getting a flora that has uh, a black ability is slim to none. It doesn't happen very often. So this spotted hyena will definitely take a little bit more time to uh, appease to meet the qualifications to get victory points for for the spotted hyena. So that's how those two work. Once again, the red-eyed green tree frog here it has a green ability so i mean it, it uh, rewards you for three or more green abilities that you may have and this inc can include islands some islands have green abilities here's an island that has a green ability for instance and it also has that black ability but you know that's a possibility right there as well so this would work with uh, helping uh, earn you uh, the victory points for the red-eyed tree frog. And if you can get some flora out there that have green abilities, let's see if we can track a few down just to show you what I mean. Let's see here. Green, green, green. Nope, no green, no green. Still no green. Don't see no green. Here's a green one. It's a terrain card. So this would still work. It's a green ability. It's a terrain card, but it would help you with that. Um, I don't see any flora as of yet right now that have green abilities so the chances are going to be rare but here's obviously another terrain card so it's going to mostly likely be just terrain cards that potentially have the green abilities but remember terrain cards can go into your 4x4 grid so they will still technically be in your 4x4 grid you'll either have terrain cards or you'll have fauna i mean not fauna you'll either have flora or terrain cards in your 4x4 grid on your island but but still it tells you there's only 10% of those that have green abilities, so it's still kind of be hard to complete. But of course, if you have your island that has a green ability, that will help with the red-eyed tree frog. And then we have the brown bear, brown bear here, but you have to have five or more brown abilities uh, to appease the brown bear, if you will. And that can include your island as well. Your island card, if it has a brown ability, that will include that as well. So those are the, some of the main ones for earning, uh, earning, you know, the qualifications, having qualifications for these uh, particular animals. Now we have the panther chameleon. Now the panther chameleon, with this one, you would have to have five or more cards, each having two different abilities. What does that mean? Okay, well you have to have, and this can include, of course, your island and your climate card. But for instance, this is two different abilities, and this is an island. So that would help meet the qualifications for the panther chameleon um and that's just an island for instance but like there are lots of cards that have two abilities on it here we have one great pitcher plant it has two abilities on it so it would help meet the qualifications for the panther chameleon okay and so you just need to have five at least of course for the panther chameleon to meet uh to appease the panther chameleon now, on the other side, this is the only card that really I'm not 100% sure on. I'm going to give you my best, best guess. I could be wrong, but this is the Fire Salamander. Um, the way this one is going to allow you to meet the qualifications, so what qualifications you need for this one? Well, let's read it what it says. It says you need to have two plus sets of five cards, including red, blue, yellow, this symbol here, which is... Um, the terrain cards, which will be on all terrain cards, and an event card. This lightning bolt means event cards. So you have to have five sets, which means you're going to need, from what I from what I understand from this interpretation, you need to have at least two cards that have the red ability. You'll need to have at least two cards that have the blue ability, two cards that have the yellow ability. You'll need to have two terrain cards in your 4x4 grid as well, and you'll have to have two events. Now, events don't go into your 4x4 grid. They go in onto your player board, and they stack onto your player board. So you'll still have to have at least two of those as well, even though they're not going into your 4x4 grid. So let's see if I can find an event in here. Let's see. see, here's an event. Fog. 
This is an event, lightning bolt. It does not go into your 4x4 grid. It will go onto your player board, onto the spot where it's supposed to go on your player board. So you'll need to have two events, okay? Two events, two of these terrain cards, terrain cards. And then of course, you're gonna need to have two cards that have red, two cards that have blue, and two cards that have yellow. And once you have basically two sets of each, of five cards, basically, then you meet the qualifications for this fire salamander. Now, like I said, this one is not 100%. That's my best guess, though, of how the fire salamander works. Hopefully that's the case. But uh, we'll go with that. So that's how the fire salamander works. Okay. Now, this uh, rainbow shield bug, it says you have to have two cards in your 4x4 grid that have basically all three abilities on the card. This is, this is sort of like a wild ability. This means you, when you activate a wild ability, it can be whenever you take the blue action, yellow action, or red action, basically. It means you get to activate the ability. So that's when you'll see this wild coloration symbol on the cards. There's not very many of them. There's only 8%. So let's see if we can find an example. Here's an example. See, this one has all three of them. So this ability can activate whenever you perform these three particular actions, red, yellow, or, or uh, uh, blue, obviously. So that's what it means. You need to have at least two of these in your on your island in the 4x4 grid, okay? To meet the qualifications, to appease, basically, or feed, for instance, the rainbow shield bug, okay? So that's how that one's gonna work, okay? Now let's go to the next side. Here we have the Arctic Turn. This one means you have to have three or more flora with a geographic term in their name. And you'll look for where it says in bold. If it counts as geographic, it will be in bold. So here we have some examples. You'll see Swamp Sprouts. Swamp is in bold. That's a geographic term, okay? So that's that would work with this card for the Arctic turn. That would help you out. Here's another one. Chinese peony. See, Chinese in bold. So another one that would work for the Arctic turn in bold. So cards basically that are in bold that basically are geog you know, geographic that are count as a geographic, geographic term would count towards this for the Arctic turn, for instance. So let's move on. So, but that's how the Arctic Turn works. Okay, so then we have the Barn Owl. Now with this one, it's uh, three flora with an animal in their name, and it will be underlined as well. It needs to be underlined, 14% of them. So here we have the Bee Balm. B as in an animal, Bee Balm. So that one would qualify for the Barn Owl, for instance. Here we have the Oyster. And you'll notice Indian on the other side is in bold. So that would also work with the Arctic Turn. But oyster, for instance, the Indian oyster would work with the barn owl as well. Because oyster is sort of an animal too, for instance. Okay? So those are just a couple of the examples that I immediately found that would work for the barn owl. Now, if it's not underlined, it doesn't count. So if you find a flora that has an animal's name in it, or just something you think is an animal for sure, even if it is, it still has to be underlined. So if it's not underlined, it doesn't count. So make mental note of that. It needs to be underlined. Okay, so that's how that side, that's how the barn owl works. Let's go to this side. So this species of hummingbird here, it has, you'll have to have three flora, with a color in their name, and it'll be in italic, okay? So basically you need to have a flora that has a color in its name, and then if you can get three of three or more of them in your four by four grid in your island, then you will obviously 
appease this animal. And so, for instance, I have a couple of examples. We have the red mangrove, for instance. You'll notice it's a little bit different from the wording here. So italic. And then we have blue milk. Blue. So two color, two, two flora right there for you that give you the example of how you're going to be able to appease this hummingbird. Okay, moving on. Okay, so next we have the American alligator. With this one, you need to have eight or more cards with basically this type of climate in their habitat, which is basically like a, a rainy kind of habitat, basically. So um, you need to have eight or more cards in your four by in your four by four grid, which means twelve cards, right? Max in your in your ha in your habitat. Okay, you need to have that type of uh, climate. So, like that could also include, of course, I forget to mention that could also include your island cards and your 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 island card and your climate card. So let's see here. Um, this island has that exact icon on it. So this island would meet the needs for this American alligator, for instance. Um, tropical monsoon, this climate here, also has that icon on it. So it would meet the qualifications for the American alligator. And then the rest of the flora that you can find that, that you put into your, obviously, 4x4 four four grid into your island, basically, that have this on it or terrain cards also count as well so that one would count for instance um let's see um, and then like for instance this one for instance would count with the american alligator as well so there's some examples for you okay that have that icon on the card you need eight or more now the arctic fox here you need to have eight or more cards that basically have this icon on the card, basically in your habitat, your island, and obviously your climate card. So basically a winter type icon, right? Okay, so that's how that one works. Okay, so then the Plains Zebra here, eight or more cards that have this icon, the sun icon basically, um, you know, in your four by four grid, or on the island, or the climate, for instance, your, your climate card would work for that as well. And then the opposite side, uh, eight plus cards with this type of icon habitat, okay? Kind of reminds me of like a mountain or a bunch of giant rocks next to each other or something like that, or maybe it's a cave. I'm not sure what the icon stands for, but the point is cards that have that icon will help you appease the mountain lion. And of course, once again, it can be also including your island card and your climate card as well. So that's how those work. All right, let's continue on. All right, so the Siamese rhinoceros beetle. With this one, you need to have 10 or more cards, each with two plus of these icons on them. So you need to have, you need to have a lot of cards that have at least two of these four icons on the card, if not three or four. It can be four, it can be three, but it has to be at least two for sure. But if you have at least two, and this include island cards, your island card and your climate card as well, you can include those. But if you have at least two of those icons on a card in your habitat, whether it's your island or your climate, then that would work to appease the Siamese rhinoceros beetle. You need 10, okay? Now this one, you need to have seven cards uh, that could include your island and your climate as well, that each have one of these icons only or zero. There are cards that have zero of these four icons on them. So that would work with the wood duck. And it can also be the cards that just have one of these four icons on the card as well. That's how the wood duck's going to work. And it could include, like I said, your island and your climate card. You need to have seven or more for the wood duck, okay? And that's it for that card. Now we have some other easy ones here, the Siberian tiger. So there are some flora that have this icon on them. 
And if you have four more in your 4x4 grid, for instance, that have this icon, then you appease the Siberian tiger. Let's see if we can find a few just, you know, to show you. The Great Pitcher Plant. It has basically what I would have, have to say is like a bush, a bush icon on it. Um, this Venus flytrap here has the bush on it, on it, icon on it. So that would work with uh, the Siberian tiger. So would this one here as well, the Oregon pipe cactus, for instance. Um, uh, let's see. And then like, for instance, this uh, brittle prickly bear or a pear, I mean would also work with the Siberian tiger. Now, on this side, the Bornean Aranatine, it needs to have, you need to have four or more cards that have this icon, basically a tree icon, in your 4x4 grid, okay? So let's see if we can find some. Here's one. The American Beach has that icon on it. So that would qualify, for instance, uh, can we find one more, maybe? Let's see. Let's see. Here we go. The English Walnut. It also counts as a tree icon as well. So that would meet the qualifications for the Bornean Arainatain. Okay. Now we have the Wild Boar. And you need to have four more in your 4x4 grid, basically, that have this icon on them, which I guess is more of a mushroom type or fungus type of icon, which would make sense, you know. And so, so so thematically, some of these cards are very thematic. I mean, wild boars, they're known for finding uh, truffles and things like that, right? So, and mushrooms and stuff like that. So that would make sense that that would work for that, even if, in a thematic sense. But for instance, this yellow staghorn counts as this icon here, for instance. Once again, I can say fungus, starfish fungus. This counts as basically a mushroom type of icon. So that works for the wild boar. So those are your some examples. And then on the other side, I guess this is sort of like a flower type of icon. So for the lubber grasshopper, if you have four or more uh, in your four by four habitat, basically, then have this icon, this flower icon, then you can meet the qualifications for it. So let's see if we can find some that have the uh, that icon on them. Uh, let's see, uh, here we go. The sensitive plant, that's one of them that has that icon on it. Uh, can we find one more example maybe? Ooh, the clamshell orchid. Yeah, an orchid's a flower, sort of like, right? So that counts, that's an icon that you need. So that's nice, that's how that one works too. So that covers that those two. Okay, now, let's see what we have here. Okay, so the Mountain Gorilla. So the way this one works is you need to have four flora filled with as many sprouts and growth as possible. And, if you'll notice in the little last little sentence, it says, having no sprouts or growth count as filled. Okay, so let's see if we can find some examples, okay? So let's see here. For instance, if this, if you wanted this to count with the mountain gorilla, then you would need to have four, basically three of these growth things, okay? These growth things on top of it. And three, I say three, because then you'll also need one of these uh, colorful ones to top it off with as well to top this, okay? So we'd need to have four, because that's what this one it grows up to. It grows to a four, basically. And then you'll notice it has three boxes here. These are sprouts. So it would have to have three cubes on the card as well in order to qualify for the mountain gorilla. So that's how that would work. So basically any flora basically could help you qualify for the mountain gorilla but they would all have to be obviously filled to their max capacity of sprouts and growth, okay? Um, this one has a lot of sprouts on it, and it's got a pretty good amount of, you know, well, this one's gonna give you, it's only got like a one growth on it, so it's not like huge, for instance, okay? So, growth, growth. So, you know, it's, let's see if we can find one that doesn't have growth, though. 
Because some, oh, this one doesn't have sprouts. So if even though it doesn't have sprouts, it would still work for the mountain gorilla because it says here it still counts as filled even if it has no sprouts or growth. But can we find one that is a flora that, oh, see, here's one that doesn't have growth on it, but it has sprouts. So it can conclude those. So obviously, flora that you put into your 4x4 grid, into your island, that have no sprouts or growth will basically be a freebie to help you finish or appease the mountain gorilla here, okay? So that's basically what that means, okay? So that's how the mountain gorilla is going to work. All right. Let's move that out of the way. Okay, so the other side, the black wildebeest. This one, you need to have eight flora or more without any uh, growth or sprouts, okay? Eight or more. So this is the exact opposite. This is requiring you to fill to the max capacity of growth and sprouts. This one's the exact opposite. This one means you have to have eight into your eight cards into your four by four grid here, okay, that don't have growth, as in it doesn't have these things on it, and it doesn't have sprouts, it doesn't have these things on it, okay? So the exact opposite. But you just have to have eight of them. So that's how that one's gonna work. Okay, let's move on. The Western Moose, this one is you have to have seven or more flora with two or less growth. So flora that are in your four by four grid that have two or less growth on them will basically allow you to obtain this one, okay? Or the, the points for this one, I mean, okay? Uh, this one is four or more flora that have four or more growth on them. That would appease the brown-throated sloth. So let's see if we can find some cards that would work with the sloth. Four or more growth, okay? Well, this one is definitely four or more. This one would count because it's four or more. Um, let's see here. Uh... This one is four or more as well. So that would work as well because it's four or more. This one is a five. So it's got a five growth on it. So once, once I said, once again, I said four or more, right? So four and five. So this one would work with the sloth, okay? And then the moose. Let's see if we can find some that are two or less. Well, this one is actually just a one, right? So this one works with this, for instance. Uh, so does this one. This one is a two or less with this one, for instance. So that's just some examples. Hopefully that helps. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so this one is seven plus flora, each with one plus growth on them. So you need to have seven flora, that have at least one or more growth on each one, okay? So it actually has to have at least one of these on them, okay? And you have to have seven of them. This one is four or more flora with each with three or more uh, growth on the flora. So once again, we would need to have at least three of these to basically give some place for this bald eagle to sit, <laughs> to appease the bald eagle, basically, to complete the qualifications. So that's how that would work. Okay. The yellow build, the yellow-bellied marmot. With this one, it, you have to have six or more flora, each with four plus sprouts, okay? So there has to be four of these cubes on a card, at least four, if not more, on each flora, or should I say at least six of them, to basically get the points for this guy, okay? Uh, this one, you have to have nine or more flora, each with one cube on it. So one sprout cube, at least, for the red squirrel. Okay, moving on. Still got a few more here. We're, we're, almost, we're almost done. 
Hopefully you can finish soon. The American Bison. This one, you'll notice, has four plus flora, each with six, and you'll look at the icon here, it's got the square and the leaf on it. So it's not like this one, where it's telling you you have to have cues on cards in order to appease this animal. This one is just telling you you have to have cards that have six of them on there. So this one has only three. It doesn't have any, right now it has no cubes on it at all, but it doesn't matter because it only has three of that particular icon with the box that surrounds it. So you need to have a card that has six on it, like for instance, the Venus flytrap. It has six. So just having this in your four by four grid allows you to, you know, work towards the goal of getting the points for the American bison here. Okay, because it has six on it. So you need to have you need to find the find the ones that have six to basically appease the bison. Okay? But that's how that one's gonna work. So you don't have to have cubes on, you don't have to have six cubes. You just have to have a place to put six cubes on your flora to get this one. Now the other side. This one's saying you have to have six flora, six or more flora, each with three or less places to put sprouts for the red deer. So for instance, once again, this one would work for the red deer because it's three or less. That's why I kept it out, because it's three or less. Okay, so that's how that one, those two would work. Moving on, the Atlantic Puffin. This one is telling you you have to have 10 plus cards with an even amount of points that the card is worth. Now this can include an island, this can include climate cards as well, and zero, oh, zero also counts as even. So even if the card is worth zero points, it counts as even. So it counts towards working towards uh, getting uh, appeasing this uh, Atlantic Puffin. Now let me show you what that means. So for instance, you'll notice that this great pitcher plant is worth zero points. It's the same exact icon. So this one would actually work towards the Atlantic Puffin goal because it's a zero, it's an even number. Another one that would work is the Venus flytrap. It's a four pointer, it's an even number. It works with the Atlantic Puffin, for instance. So that's how that would work. Um, and of course, this could include your island as well. Let's see if we can find one that has an even number on here. Not that one, not that one, ooh, this one. Here's an island that has an even number on it. It has four points on it. So this would work towards the Atlantic Puffin goal, for instance. And if you have a climate card that also has a even number on it as well, that will help you complete the qualifications for the Atlantic Puffin, okay? So that's how that is gonna work. Now, obviously on the opposite side, it's basically the same except the exact opposite. So let's go over it real quick. The Sri Lankan Leopard. This one, you have to have seven or more cards with an odd amount of victory points. And it still tells you that zero counts as even, so zero won't work towards uh, completing the this leopard here. So what would have an odd amount of points? Well, this include, include islands and climate cards, of course. This one is one victory point, so this would work towards the leopard, for instance. Um, let's see if we can find. So here we have a terrain card. It's worth one victory point. It's an odd number. So it would help you towards the leopard goal, for instance. Um, here we have the yellow staghorn. It's worth seven victory points. So once again, it's an odd number. So it would help with the Sri Lankan leopard. So those are some ideas, some options, some examples of cards that will help you complete this leopard. And that's how those two animals work. Okay, then we have the gray wolf here. With this one, you need to have six or more cards, each with a certain amount of victory points of four or more. So, meaning you have to have a card like this one that's seven victory points, okay? So it has to be a card that's worth four victory points or more. So this one would work because it's worth seven victory points. And you need to have six of them. This can also include your island and your climate cards as well, for instance. So four plus. 
Now on this side, this one means you need to have 11 cards or more, each with this amount of victory points of three or less in your either your 4x4 grid, your island, or your climate card, for instance. So let's see here if we can find one. Like so, this one won't obviously work. This one works, obviously, because it's worth zero points, and it's three and under. So that, for instance, is an example of a card that would earn you the points for the seven-spotted ladybug. So those, those two are done. Okay, still got one, two, three, four, five, so ten more to go. Whew! Okay, hopefully I saved some of the last ones for last that are easy. Okay, so for this one, we have six cards. You need to have six cards, each with a soil cost of four or more. So cards that, now each card is, some cards are, are, are going to be, they have a cost of zero. But for instance, this yellow staghorn, it has a cost of eight soil. So it would work with the African bush elephant working towards the goal for this one. Because it's worth eight, it costs eight money, basically. Eight soil. Soil is money. So it costs eight money. And this one requires you to have six cards uh, that have a soil cost of four or more. Okay? And the 49% of the cards have that. Uh, so that's how that one would work. With this one, you need to have nine or more cards, each with a soil cost of three or less. So that's how the Western Honeybee is going to work. You need to find a card that's going to cost three or less that goes into your 4x4 four four grid. Uh, let's see if I can find one real quick. Uh, these are all high. Oh, here we go. So the Great Pitcher Plant, it only costs two soil. So this one qualifies for the Western Humming Bee. Okay? So that's how those two animals work. Okay, the European Mole. Now, with this one, in order to acquire this one, you have to have 20 or more soil in your reserve. So basically, you have to be a hoarder of money. You have to hold on to your money and make sure you have at least 20 money. And when you have 20 money that you haven't spent, that's in your reserve, that you didn't use, then you can require acquire this one in your reserve. You need to have 20 or more to get this, okay? So that's, that's how that's going to work. You need to have 20 or more money. With this one, with the earthworm here, you need to have 15 or more cards in your, basically your mulch. Now on your player board, sometimes you don't just simply discard cards. Sometimes you're going to compost cards. And when you compost cards, they go into a stack on your player board, okay? So those cards, those cards that sit in your compost, they give you one victor point for every composted card you have. But this one means you have to have at least 15 in there that, that you've composted. And if you do have at least 15, then you, you can appease these earthworms, which makes sense because they would be sitting in your compost anyways if this was real life. So that's how those two animals work. Okay, then we have the green tree ant. With this one, you have to have four or more of these cards in your event stack. So basically, you have to find and play, obviously, cards that are event cards. And you have to have at least to have, have, have to have at least played four of them. So this is an event card. You're going to need to have one of these. You're going to have to find other event cards, too, as well, and play them. And when you do, they go into a stack on your player board stating that you've played them, basically. So you need to have four. So here we go. That was four events, five events. So there we go. Those are our examples. That's what you need to have in order to get to appease the green tree ant. Then we have the Andean condor here. Now, there's no hand limit in this game. You can have as many cards as you want. There's no hand limit. So in order to uh, appease the Andean condor here, you need to have 20 cards in your hand. 20 cards that you haven't composted, that you haven't discarded, and that you haven't played, obviously. Okay? 20 cards. Pretty easy and straightforward. So that's how those two work. The Northern Giraffe. This one you have to fill two columns in your island. So remember, this is a 4x4 four four grid that you're trying to complete here. So you need to have, basically, two columns filled with cards. Okay? So one, two, 
three, four. That's a column. So once you have four in a column and you have another column beside it or somewhere else in your four by four grid, then you can appease the northern giraffe and move on, obviously, getting the victory points for it. Now, with this species of butterfly, it's similar, except it's with two plus rows. So instead of a column, you need rows. So you need to have a four by four row. Obviously, that's pretty easy. Those two animals are definitely the easiest cards to obviously understand and score. So we can move on, shall we? Let's move on. But those are obviously the easiest ones right there. And then we've got two more animals. And then we're done. Whew, okay. So let's do this one first. The emerald tree boa. With this one, you need to fill uh, both four diagonals in your island. Okay, so let's just explain this. Now, when you play your game, when you play this game, and you place out a card... When you play out your second card, usually, when you think of a game, usually you, you, you can place it here, or you can place it here, or you can place it here, or you can place it here. But when you play Earth, you can also place a card here, diagonally. You can place it diagonally. So once you've placed, basically, all, your four, all four cards diagonally in your 4x4 four four grid, so once you have this diagonal line from here to here, 4x4, four and this diagonal line, 4x4, four four, to here, basically, so to speak, something like that. Of course, it still has to be a 4x4 four four grid. That's not exactly 4x4 four four grid, but you know, understand what I mean. Once you have that, once you have that, then you can get the points for the Emerald Tree Boa here. And remember, the points are going to be on a, on a board that tell you the points you get. The points aren't, obviously, on these animals. But that's, that's basically how that's going to work. So that means you don't necessarily have to have every card filled in your 4x4 grid. You just need to have the other cards in those directional, in those diagonal areas to get this one taken care of. Okay, last one. Very last one. And then we're done. Okay, so let's move these out of the way. Now that I've explained the snake. Okay. Last one is the King Penguin. This one, you have to have four or more cards that have directional um, directional stuff on the card. Um, where did I have those cards? Did I move them? I had a bunch nearby just to make sure I understood this. Maybe I moved some of them. Let's go through and sh see if I can find some that would work with appeasing the King Penguin. Here we go. The purple jelly disc. You'll notice it has a bunch of arrows on it. A diagonal arrow, left and right arrow, up and down arrows, but it has arrows on it. So this particular card would help you basically get the qualifications met for the King Penguin because it's cards, four or more cards in your 4x4 grid with directional aids. And it shows you the icons that it's looking for on the card etc. So, so that's one, for instance. This one would also work because it has directional aids on it. Only two of them, but it's still directional aids, so that one would work, for instance. Ah, here we go. You have another one here that's directional aids. I just accidentally put those cards on top. But yes, we have some more that have directional aids, and some more that have directional aids. For instance, here's even another one. So that's what that means. That's how the keen penguin is going to work if you want to meet the qualifications for the king penguin. So that's all of the animals. That's all of the fauna cards in Earth explained. Hopefully, this will help you guys understand how all of the fauna cards work. Now, in, a, in the future, at some point, I will probably explain how the flora cards work, which will probably take more than one video since there's so many of them. This one was obviously a long video to, be, to boot. I'll probably explain how ecosystem cards work, island cards work, and climate cards work in separate videos as well in the future. Now, if you want me to do it sooner than, rather than later, why don't you leave a like on this video and leave it in the comments that, hey, you would like me to explain how the other cards from Earth work as well. But I wanted to cover this first because this is the main reason why I got... 
the game to begin with was the animals. Okay? This was the main reason. Animals. I love animals. So I wanted to explain how they worked first. So thank you guys for watching this video. Like I said, don't forget to leave me a like, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.